of us and uh, those of you who follow Jack's radio show over the years remember his, the wonderful cast, well, of course, with Mary and Don Wilson and uh, Rochester, Dennis Day, Phil Harris, even going back to the days of Kenny Baker, one of the men on his show who played so many different characters and, as you probably know, has done the voices of most of the famous cartoon characters from Bugs Bunny to Porky Pig to Barney Rubble to the Flintstones. And we'll talk about some of the other things that Mel has done on your show over the years. He's, uh, he's really some artist. Would you welcome Mr. Mel Blank? Mel. Good, thank you, Johnny. Is that it? Yeah, 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 pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> That's a remark. How many years did you work before people actually saw you doing anything? I mean, you, you people who do voices and start with voices uh, do very well in the business. A lot of my friends like uh, Junie Foray and other people who do the voices, everybody hears them but don't but very seldom see them until television came along, right? That's right. I started uh, radio in 1927. Do you have an idea how that I'm older than Jack Benny? No. <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> you started that early? 1927, a program in Portland, Oregon called the uh, Hoot Owls, in which I sang a song. My brother Henry accompanied me, and uh, I sang this crazy little song. Yeah. Wanna eat, wanna eat, wanna eat it. <laughs> <laughs> how does one get into that rather... Uh small group of people who do voices. Uh, you, you show up, or do people say, we want a voice of something, and you go in and audition for a particular character? Or? No, I, uh, I tried for a year and a half to get into Schlesinger cartoons. And uh, this uh, head of the company, or head of the voice department, kept saying, uh, we have all the voices we need. We don't uh, need anybody. And I kept this up for every two weeks. I'd go there, and uh, he kept saying the same thing. I said, just listen to me anyway. And... Uh, Kept saying, I have all the voices we need. Finally, the guy died. Not nice to laugh at the dead. For those oh. of, well, anyway, I went to the next guy in charge, a guy by the name of Treg Brown, and uh, I told him that uh, I would like to have him hear me. He said, sure, what can you do? I auditioned for him, and then he said, great, would you do it for the directors? So I auditioned for the directors, and one of the directors said, uh, can you do a drunken bull? A drunken bull? Yeah, that had eaten some sour mash. And I had to... <laughs> that's not him. And, uh... Well, I... that's from that picture you saw. <laughs> yes. And, uh, I thought, uh, yes, I said, I can do a drunken bull. He said, how would it sound? I said, well, it sounded a little, a little like you was looking for some, some sour mash. <laughs> he said, great, what are you doing Tuesday? He said, let's say Tuesday. I wasn't doing a darn thing. I see. I think I can make it all right. Just can squeeze it in. That was the first voice I did in the cartoons. And the director that asked me to do it was Frank Tashlin, who's now yes. a director in pictures. I certainly is. How did Bugs Bunny come about? Did, did you audition for that? No, they again? showed me a picture of uh, this crazy little character. And they said he was tough, told me what the storyline was going to be. And I thought, uh, let's see now, which is the toughest voice in the United States? It's either Brooklyn or the Bronx. So I said, why don't I put the two together? So, uh, that's what come out, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> what, is funny? You know, what, is, what, what is funny, when they do these voices to cartoons, and we tried to just show it one night, and it didn't work because you, we couldn't get the proper setup, is when they show a cartoon or an animated picture, and you see people like Mel and Alan Reed and June Foray and Paul Fries and somebody who do a lot of these voices, watching the cartoon and standing around a microphone for adult people doing these voices is the funniest thing. That is hysterical. They should film that. You know, grown men going... Bee -bee 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 <laughs> <laughs> and going home after a day's work. Now, for years, when I listened to Jack's show... And he'd well, get... they filmed everything yeah. that he did on my show, and he did all the characters. He did... Uh, no, the first violent. place you did the train announcer. Didn't you? Oh, the, How did you do that? Now, the train show. leaving on track five uh, for Anaheim... Azusa and Coop come on there. <laughs> then you'd add something. <clears throat> don't get off at Coop come on there. We don't stop there. <laughs> you know, for years now, people oh, who lived back in the thing. Midwest didn't know there was a place as Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. We thought we never heard of such places. We thought they were making let, them up. Let me tell you, we did one show. He stopped 
in the middle of kook for a long time, and I said something, and then listen to what he said. Do the one where you said, Anaheim, Azusa, and Cooper. Anaheim, Azusa, train, and... Start with train leaving. Train leader. leaving on track five for Anaza, Anaheim, Azusa, and Coop. Oh, no. Among... Uh, <laughs> no! <laughs> Damn it, you spoiled it. Oh, no. Oh, Coop, come doing a... Oh, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Are tired of it? <laughs> no, no, I wanted to hear the way you actually did it. Train leaving on track. Give him my signal. This is the rehearsal. Right. Rehearsal, all you right. You can go out. Okay. All right. <laughs> right. Train, Train leaving on track five for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cook. Oh, no. Oh, yes. A manga. A manga. A manga. A manga. <laughs> I remember. He does. 40, 40 years ago, I don't remember. 40 it. years he remembers everything. What now, else? What when I used to listen to your show, I'm going to ask him this. And you would go out in the Maxwell and start the car. Yes. I'd say those are the wildest sound effects I've ever heard in my life because most mechanical things are done by a, by a recorded thing. And Mel used to do it when I'd go see the radio show. You'd, Mel would stand up on the stage. Yeah, I, I used to say... And Rochester. the audience would go into hysterics. I used to say, Rochester, get the Maxwell started because I want to leave. <laughs> and Mel would be the Maxwell. Gee, you ought to have a mic right near you. for the can we, we, have we can drop right this down. Can you drop this Just down? put in the picture, don't worry yeah. about it. So I said, get Rochester, get the Maxwell started. And he would go out, and you'd hear the Maxwell, and this would, this would be it. Go Well, still sounds like that without him. You know. <laughs> and the studio audience used to fall down from laughter just well, watching Mel do these things. Freddie's trying to, trying to tell us something. English, English horse. The English huh? horse. Oh, how they tried oh, to catch him. Wait, wait, you've got to hear this. <laughs> you know, we used to do weeks of westerns called Buck Benny Rides Again. Right, but Andy Devine. So we'd have a horse. Andy Devine would be on. He'd call me Buck and everything. So he would do the horses. So first, do just the horse, the Winnie. That's right. Now, one day my writers and I got together and we said, let's play a dirty trick on Mel Blanc and see what he does at rehearsal. He must comment on it. So we said, let's write in an English horse. <laughs> For no reason. Now, we thought, certainly, he must say to us, what the hell does this mean, an English horse? He never said a word to us, never opened his mouth. When it came time to do the English horse, this is what he did. We didn't even know it. That is great. What else did we do? You did the seesaw. Yeah. yeah that the Mexican? Yes, you did. Used to do the Mexican... Uh... Always the Mexican routine. And it always went the same way, and people screamed at the same things. And I would see him, he'd be a Mexican. Let's say I'd be at a railroad station. Do you know the routine you used to do when you did the treasure, the Sierra Madre? And you kept saying, see? Remember yeah, that's that? it. You know that's that? the routine. So I would say, uh, I'd go I'm up to him, you. and I'd say, pardon me, uh... Are, are you leaving for Mexico City? Si. <laughs> Is your train late? Si. Have you... <laughs> have you been waiting here a long time? Si. What's your name? Si. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a friend of yours sitting with you? Si. Your sister? Si. I'm afraid to ask this next one. What's her name? Sue. Sue? Si. <laughs> oh, what 
what else? Where'd we go from there? What does she do for a living? Huh? What does she oh, do? Oh, yeah. Living? Oh, this one. Finally, I said to her, what, what thing? This wasn't even the script. I said, what does she do for a living? So. <laughs> so? So? See. <laughs> oh, those are great routines. Great. Uh, those were some of the best constructed comedy moments ever on radio. So little dialogue. Great construction. Boom, 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 and then the topper, and then the topper, mm -hmm. and a... we'll take a brief pause. We'll be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>